Senator John Cornyn, a Republican, I think, out of Texas. He questioned Merrick Garland. Now, I don't know Cornyn's background. This was last spring, probably. So this was just, this video is a bit old. This oversight committee hearing took place quite a while ago. But I thought it was interesting because Cornyn did a good job of honing in what Besides the fact that no one was consulted, he did a good job of honing in on what I think the, the key point of this memo is, and that was, to put it politely, by whose authority are you changing federal law that was passed by Congress and signed by the president? And if you want to read the memo, I'd say read the memo. Again, you can find it on justice.gov. I gave the name of the memo. And then watch the video and see what's written in that memo makes sense with this video you're going to see right here. And specifically, what I want to ask you is about two different memos that you issued to uh, prosecutors with regard to mandatory minimum sentencing. Um, and specifically, in the charging memo, uh, one of the charging memos, you said the proliferation of provisions carrying mandatory minimum sentences has often caused Unwarranted, unwarranted disproportionality in sentencing and disproportionately severe sentences. Now, just to be clear, mandatory minimum sentences are statutory, correct? In other words, they're passed by Congress and signed into law by the president. Yes, that's right. And here, you, you suggest that prosecutors should not enforce or charge with um, charge defendants with a crime which carries a mandatory minimum under certain circumstances, correct? I, I can, uh, uh, that's not exact. If I can just have a moment to explain, I'm very No, fine. well, if you just answer the question. So, um, the memo says specifically, I'll just read it to you. It said, for this reason, charges that subjected defendant to a mandatory minimum sentence should ordinarily be reserved for instances in which the remaining charges uh, would not sufficiently reflect the seriousness of the defendant's criminal conduct, danger to the community, harm to victims, or other considerations uh, outlined above. So basically, your charging memorandum says that prosecutors can exercise their discretion to charge less than the most serious offense because you don't like the mandatory minimum sentence that Congress has, uh, has passed, correct? Yes. You know, Senator, this is a question of allocating our resources and focusing them on violent crime. Uh, later on, I thought you said I thought you said that uh, your job was to enforce the law with regard to, without regard to policy differences. It's not a question of policy differences. It's a question of the resources. You don't have enough money. You don't, don't have enough, enough people. people. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough jails. We don't have enough uh, judges. Uh, but like, you arrogated to yourself the, the the decision to make policy by saying that in spite of the fact that there are mandatory minimum sentences for many of these drug crimes, which are now causing untold death and destruction across America, you're telling prosecutors don't charge those if they involve a mandatory minimum sentence. With, with respect, Senator, the memorandum makes clear that that general uh, uh, analysis doesn't apply in violent crime, doesn't apply in drug trafficking, doesn't apply in cases in which there's injury. But you're cherry picking which cases that you will charge with a mandatory minimum sentence and not applying them uniformly and charging the most serious crime that can be proven at trial. If we apply it to every single crime, we will not be able to focus our resources on violent crime, significant drug trafficking, on the cartels, on the people who are killing people with fentanyl. So the purpose here is to focus the attention of our prosecutors and agents on things that are damaging the American people in the largest possible respect. Discretion, and this is what the, the congressman's asking or the senator is asking uh, the AG. He says, prosecutors can use their discretion and not file the most serious offense because you don't like minimum mandatory sentences that Congress has passed. And the attorney general pushed back and said, no, it's about allocation of resources and focusing on violent crime. That is ridiculous, Mark. That is ridiculous because this should be so patently blatant for everyone to see. The attorney general put additional standards on these cases. He put on there additional things that have to be proved. In actuality, this memo makes the, the justice uh, system 
less efficient. Of course. The changes that he's making make it less efficient. He's actually requiring that more work be done and that the process be slowed down. The people that wrote this law did it for the very purpose of making things work smoothly, efficiently, and going after the most significant drug traffickers. This attorney general is the one that has added on all these additional boxes that need to be checked, which means more investigation time, which means prosecutors needing to prove more what are called overt acts that were committed in a conspiracy. So all these things take time and take resources. He put that, I want to make that clear, the attorney general put that extra burden on there, and that is having an effect around the country right now. That's slowing down investigations. It's slowing down prosecutions. And the only thing I can think of, Mark, is that's being done because there's this desire to not incarcerate people for even for significant crimes. Are you, are you thinking any differently? Did I miss anything on this? No. And, and you summed up the video very well. Look, sure. we can, I think we will talk about Merrick Garland a little more before we leave, but I use this word a lot. So much of this, aside from him, aside from his, his decision to circumvent what the law says, and this is exactly what he did in this memo, there's still a level of leadership that could counteract his behavior. And that's what the U.S. Attorney General was, because look, with, with the U.S. Attorneys, I'm sorry, with the U.S. Attorneys, mm -hmm. the various districts, because mm -hmm. at least Merrick Garland, I say at least, I mean, he's a, he's a slime ball to keep it G-rated for this show. He knew he could not specifically say you're not to enforce this law. He couldn't get away that with that. So what he did was he put all these parameters, he put all this gobbledygook in there, like he said, to make it less efficient to make it more difficult to get one of these dirtbacks prosecuted. You give the great example of the sale of 40,000 or the purchase, 40,000 fentanyl pills, right? Was it 40,000? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And you had a U.S. attorney saying, well, I don't think we can get him for real, blah, blah, because the memo. No, you're still the U.S. attorney and there's nothing in there that says you absolutely can't. Is it you should, you shall, you shouldn't immediately jump to the conclusion, blah, blah, blah. A U.S. attorney has the responsibility to say, hell, 40,000 pills. I'm going to go ahead and prosecute this. I'm going to prosecute it under 21, what the statute is. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and prosecute. Yep. yep. But i tell you right now, it's a lack of leadership because what all those U.S. attorneys no, is that Merrick Garland does not want them to prosecute. And most of them, as far as I can tell, don't have the nuts to stand yep. up and say, I'm going to do my freaking job. That's exactly what Merrick Garland wants. And I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised if this guy did have individual conversations with these attorneys. Listen, I know what the memo says. It's these shoulds and yep. should nots and blah, blah, blah. But you know what it means. Don't do it. Don't yep. do it unless it's that's my opinion about it. So there are still people, there are still times in your life, and you, you have these positions of authority, you still stand up for what you know is right. By the way, the law is on their side. Yep. Congress is on their side. Stand up. But most people just want to roll over, play dead, and go along with the flow. And unfortunately, it looks like it includes some of these use attorneys. You bring up, it reminds me of a funny story, Mark, because shortly after this memo came out, so it would have been January of 23, maybe January, February, there was a case that had already been charged, right? The case had already been charged prior to this memo. There was a warrant in the system. The memo comes out. This defendant gets picked up and makes his appearance in court. And the prosecutor, the assistant U.S. attorney handling this case was almost apologetic to the judge that this person had been charged and cited this memo. And to the judge's credit, he said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't care what you're talking about. This is a legitimate charge. If you want to drop these charges and charge it different, you go ahead and do it. That like the prosecutor is afraid she's going to get in trouble by the judge for charging a crime that's on the books, right? For charging a crime for a, a violation that's on the books. That's a scary mm -hmm. situation. 